It's been a year now since I collected this Suzuki V-Strom 800DE loan bike from Suzuki GB and now sadly it's time to give it back. It's been a great bike for testing a load of touring and adventure kit and in this video I'll tell you what it's been like over nearly 6,500 miles. I rode 400 miles on my first day with this bike, it had its first service done the next day and then I set off on a riding holiday to Scotland the day after that. It didn't even take half of my first day to get used to this bike. I knew within the first hour of riding it that I was going to be very, very happy with the Feastrom 800DE. It took me 12 hours to do those first 400 miles and it was a really, really good start to life on the 800DE. And it just got better on the Scotland trip that came after it. I went with my partner Helen on her Honda CB750 Hornet and we did 1400 miles in a week. The 800DE was excellent on everything from fast and flowing roads down to some of the bumpy crumbling tarmac you get up in the Scottish Highlands. The engine was flexible enough to make riding easy at any speed and I found the handling surprisingly nimble considering this is actually quite a heavy bike at 230 kilos. The 20 litre fuel tank and 63 miles per gallon economy helped as well so I could go a whole day on just one tank of fuel. I didn't have any Suzuki hard luggage, I just strapped a jivvy roll bag to the pillion seat at the start of each day and got on with riding. By the end of that trip I'd done 1800 miles on the V-Strom in the first 10 days and I felt completely comfortable with the bike. And that fuel economy meant it only cost me around £120 in petrol money for a very enjoyable week's riding holiday. I'm really lucky. My ride to work is a 33 mile combination of rural B roads with a mix of everything from tight turns over crests to wide fast sweeping bends. I can have a lot of fun on my ride to work and back. Now, just as it had done on my riding holiday, the 800DE has made my commute a lot of fun as well. It's not as perky as its Suzuki sibling, the GSX-8S, which I did have for a short spell during the summer as well. That bike's got a very similar engine, but it's a bit more exciting, and that inspired me to ride in a more spirited way. So if you aren't fussed by practicalities and long distance comfort, then maybe an 8S would be a better bet for you. But there's more room on the V-Strom, it's got a bigger fuel tank, and I ride it in a more economical style. So that means fewer fuel stops and less money spent on fuel, which is really important on the commute. I only need to fill up every fourth day as well, which I also love. I try to avoid riding at night, but when I have needed to, I've been really happy with the headlights. The dip beam is possibly a bit narrow, but the main beam widens it out really nicely. So overall, this has been an absolutely great commuter bike. I didn't think I could really have a year with a bike called the Dirt Edition and for it to be a complete year without at least a little bit of off-roading. So our warehouse manager Ant took me out for a day's riding around the dirt roads of Norfolk which was brilliant fun. I fitted some Mitas knobbly tyres, I took out the removable foot peg rubbers, twisted the handlebars forward a little bit to make it more comfortable in the standing position and I had an absolute whale of a time. The fly-by-wire throttles gravel riding mode worked to treat and the V-Strom was excellent for light off-roading in the hands of a relatively inexperienced dirt rider like me. I couldn't wait to take the knobblies off again afterwards though. They were great in the dirt, but I hated them on the road. And while we're talking about rubber, I tried three different pairs of tyres. I liked the original Dunlop mix tours that came on the bike, but I thought the rear squared off a bit prematurely. The techs at Suzuki replaced that after it had done 3,300 miles. After that short stint on the Mitas Nobles, I fitted Continental TKC 70s. They're a hybrid dirt gravel tyre, a bit like those original Dunlops, and I got on really well with those. I think the Dunlops handle very slightly better than the Contis, and they are a bit quieter. But I would say the Contis have lasted better. They also started squaring off after 3,000 miles or so, but not as badly. Now, I've not spent loads of miles riding in a straight line on this bike, so maybe the V-Strom is just a bit heavy on its rear tyre. The label on the chain guard of this bike recommends 36 PSI in the rear tyre for solo riding. I found running the two up pressure of 41 PSI all the time makes the tyre last longer and the bike still handles well at that pressure. One other practicality with the tyres as well, the 800DE runs inner tubes, so you can't just plug a puncture and ride on, you'll need to repair or replace the tube, which is more hassle and it will put off some riders. Suzuki fitted three optional extras for me after I'd had the bike for a few months. The heated grips made winter much more bearable and I don't find them to be noticeably thicker than the standard grips. At £357 they are a bit pricey and there's no way of glancing down and seeing what heat level I'm on either. But they're warm and they're comfy so really that's the main thing. 
The touring screen is just a bit taller and wider than the original and it has made the ride quieter. Adventure bikes like this are inherently quite noisy and there's only so much you can do to fix that by replacing a screen, but this one has helped and it costs 72 pounds. The center stand was important for me. This is a heavy bike to put on a paddock stand and being able to lube a chain on a long trip does make life easier. I've found it takes a particular technique to get the bike up on the stand and it does come down quite suddenly as well, but it's been useful to have that and that costs 311 pounds and 40 pence. Now you might be watching this and wondering what your Suzuki V-Strom 800DE would look like after a year and nearly six and a half thousand miles on the road. This morning I got the bucket and sponge out to give this a good clean and see what the condition's like. Now I think it stood up very well actually. Suzuki used to have a reputation for not having the best finish, but this bike's coped really well with running through the whole year. There is the odd patch of corrosion on bolts here and there, but not many, and some of the metal would benefit from polish, but on the whole it stayed in very good nick. The downpipes have browned after I rode the bike on dirt, but I think some effort with metal polish would soon bring that back. The matte yellow paint in some sections has also got a bit stained and the plastic heel plates as well, they're looking a bit worn, but I have spent the whole year wearing Gore-Tex race boots and the plastic on those is what's left the marking on the heel plates. Wearing more adventure style boots with suede protection on the inner surface would stop that and I think that's probably what most people are wear with this bike. The chain and sprockets are in good nick, the chain hasn't needed much adjustment at all through the year and overall I've been really happy with how the bike's held up. I've really enjoyed my time with this bike. I've enjoyed it a lot. It's been fun to ride, it's been comfortable over distance, it's economical to run, and it goes a long way between fill-ups, which I especially like. To buy this, a V-Strom 800DE is a pound under 11,000 pounds. But not many people look at that number now. Really, it's all about the monthly payments, it seems. So if I bought a brand new version of this bike now on PCP by putting down a two grand deposit and said I'm going to do 6,000 miles in the next year as I've done on this one, it would cost me £130 a month and that seems a pretty damn good arrangement to me. There are some things to bear in mind. Being an 800 might make this sound like a baby V-Strom, especially compared to the 1050cc version, but this is no baby. It is quite a big bike. Seat height at 855mm and 230Ks makes it quite big. I'm 5 foot 10, quite confident moving bikes around, so I've been okay, but some people might be intimidated. Maybe the new V-Strom 800RE or the Road Edition will be a bit more easy going in that sense. Luckily, I'll find out soon as I'm spending most of next month riding one of those. I hope it's as good as this 800DE as I've really enjoyed having this bike and I'm going to miss having it around. As ever with our videos, I hope you've got what you wanted from this one, but if you've got anything you'd like to ask or some experience you'd like to share, please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.